And good evening to you. Thanks for joining us for the midweek Bible study. Uh, this week's going to be just a little bit different. I'm not going to try to use uh, technology and go to PowerPoint and some different things just simply because of uh, schedule, several things going on. But thanks for joining uh, with us tonight. As we begin, let me just remind you of a few things. Don't forget about our upcoming service on Sunday, big day at Temple Baptist Church. Lots of things to celebrate. Had a great day last Sunday. Uh, rejoice in the two baptisms. It's possible we're going to have other baptisms this coming Sunday. So uh, praise the Lord for that. We're excited for it and want to make sure and see in your place. We're going to say a word about that a little bit in the devotion that I'm going to share. But I uh, trust you've had a good day. Beautiful day. Just a little bit cool. And uh, I spent my day, in fact, yesterday and the day before, um, I guess yesterday and uh, today... And tomorrow, I've got jury duty, so I'm getting that joy. But thank you for uh, taking the opportunity to share and join with us this evening. Uh, as we begin, uh, let me first of all mention to you our Missionaries of the Week. Our Missionary of the Week is uh, Graham and Melinda Forbes, uh, who are serving in the UK. So be, please keep them in your prayer. Now, I'm going to give you a trivia. I'm just going to give it to you. You'll have to do your own homework. Hopefully, you're listening close enough to get it. Here's your missions trivia. All right. Uh, if you if you look at the website for their sending agency, uh, you'll know that uh, it says that they've been involved in church revitalization in the UK, and particularly they've had a, a work that they've done in um, in Paisley, Scotland, Scotland, and another one in Birmingham, England. And so praise the Lord for the great work they've done now in these many years they've been over there. The question is, how far is it? from Paisley, Scotland to Birmingham, England. Now, if you, if you get two different directions you can go, take the M6, use that one. But let's see if you can find the answer. Send it to me and text it to me. We'll see how many get the right answer. We'll put it in the bulletin on Sunday. Hey, thanks for joining us this evening. Uh, I want to share with you tonight, just in the time that we have, and that I was I ran across an article, and the, the gist of the article was talking about the fact that uh, for all the things, you know, through this pandemic, a lot of things that have happened. Um, it, the article was entitled, Technology Cannot Replace Presence, Why the Church Will Always Gather. It's so important, and a lot of things about it. Certainly, technology through this time with the pandemic and different things have uh, caused um, a rethinking of how some things are done. It's caused an adjustment in how some people approach church, some for the better, some for the worse. I was just sharing with someone today about how that through technology, we've had missionaries join us for prayer time and different things. But in the article, it talked about several things. And, and while technology can be a blessing, it can also be a curse, but we also have to keep it in its place. One of the things, let me read one paragraph to you. It says, the superiority of physical presence is so obvious that it seems strange to even argue for it. Who would be so perverse as to prefer a text message from a beloved to having dinner with her at a favorite restaurant? Or who would choose a phone call from our mother over the joy of a warm embrace and a leisurely conversation. Technology is wonderful. We live in the era of it. It is something that we will deal with and things that we have to keep in mind. It can be a blessing. It can help us. There are many opportunities that come with it. But I think it is good for us sometime to be reminded. Technology, and this is one thing I want to challenge you for. Technology can never substitute for some of those in-person meetings. And particularly as we when we gather together as a church. When I read the article, it caused me to begin thinking about that. And I wrote some things down. I'm going to give you just two or three things tonight to take with you. And we'll look at some scripture references. And then I want to encourage you to be in your place on Sunday. Look forward, for a great, look forward to a great day in the Lord's house. The first thing I wrote down after reading that article is this. Gathering together is the example of the first church. Gathering together is the example of the first church. When um, when we preached through the book of Acts and we, we talked about the events that transpired in, in the book of Acts, and in Va Acts chapter 2, of course, that great day on the day of Pentecost, in verse 41, then they that gladly received his word were baptized, and the same day there were added unto them about 3,000 souls. And it says this, and they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine 
and fellowship and in breaking of bread, breaking of bread and in prayers, and fear came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were done by the apostles. And all that believed were together. He said together and had all things common. They sold their possessions and goods and parted them to all men as every man had need. And they continuing daily with one accord in the temple and breaking of bread from house to house did eat their meat with gladness and singleness of heart, praising God and having favor with all the people. So it, and when it gives this passage, you see that togetherness that came. These new believers, as they came into the fellowship, they understood the importance of coming together. And we see that the very first example that we have is, and of course, back then, they didn't, I know they didn't have the technology we have today, and there are things about it, but still, there was a camaraderie that came by them coming together. And so I think, first of all, when we look at Scripture, the first thing we see that gathering together is the example that we see in the first century church. Over and over, you'll see when, when the Apostle Paul, he sent for the elders to come and meet with him, the elders from Ephesus, when he was on his way to Jerusalem. But gathering together, first of all, is an example of the first church. Number two, the second thing I wrote down after that was this. Letters were sometimes necessary, but could not substitute for meeting face to face. Letters were sometimes necessary. Boy, how many of you are old enough? You remember the old days we corresponded by writing letters. I wrote letters to my wife. She wrote letters to me. Sometimes when she sent the letters, she sent packages that might have cookies in them or something. But we, we wrote letters back and forth. I still have those letters in a box. Letters were necessary back in this day, but they were no substitute for meeting face to face. In fact, in 2 John, in fact, almost 2 John and 3 John, he says almost the identical thing. In 2 John verse 12, he says, having many things to write unto you, I would not write with paper and ink, but I trust to come unto you and to speak face to face. Now look at the reason why, that our joy may be full. He said, look, I've got other things I wanna share with you, but I wanna come do it in person. Letters couldn't substitute, nor can technology substitute for us coming together personally, uh, coming together corporately, and being together. So he wrote that, and he said, look, I have other things I want to share, but not in pen and ink. I want to talk to you face to face. Third John, he said similarly, I had many things to write, but I will not with ink and pen write unto thee, but I trust I shall sh uh, shortly see thee, and we will speak face to face. When Paul wrote to the church at Thessalonica in 1 Thessalonians 2, verse 17, he says, But we, brethren, being taken from you for a short time in presence, not in heart, endeavored the more abundantly, look at this, to see your face with great desire. Wherefore, we would have come unto you, even I, Paul, once and again, but Satan hindered us. He said, I want to see your face. I want to see your face. 1 Thessalonians chapter 3, he also says, But now when Timotheus came from you unto us and brought us good tidings of your faith and charity, and that we have good that, uh, that ye have good remembrance of us always, desiring greatly to see us as we also to see you. So again, you see that reminder. Hey, he wanted to see them. He wanted to be there in person for them. And there's that reminder he says in verse 9, And what thanks can we render to God again for you, for all the joy wherewith we joy for your sakes before God, night and day, praying exceedingly that we might see your face and might perfect that which is lacking in your faith. Can I tell you this? Coming together as a church and meeting corporately, hey, through the pandemic, different things, adjustments have made. Some people have gone more to technology. Can I tell you, number one, gathering together is the example that's given to us in Scripture. Number two, letters were sometimes necessary, but it could never replace meeting face-to-face. -face. That's so important. The third thing that I wrote is that believers were instructed not to abandon meeting together. Believers were instructed as to that. Hebrews 10, you know that great passage, well-known passage, beginning of verse 23. Let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering. For he is faithful that promised. 
and let us consider one another. Now think about others is what he's saying and provoke unto love and to good works. He says, I want you to think about your brothers and sisters in Christ and think of how you can encourage them, motivate them in their love and toward good works, to do good works. How are we going to do that? Not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another and so much the more as you see the day approaching. I couldn't help but think even as I'm sharing this, and this is a time when at present we're using technology uh, for our midweek service, but let me just remind you, we still, when we come together, let me encourage you, be in your place. This Sunday's a big day. Be in your place. If you've been watching online, but you can get out, be in your place. And let's worship together. Worshiping together is important. First of all, the believers were instructed not to abandon meeting together. Number two, hey, letters could some be texting, corresponding, however, letters were sometimes necessary, even back in Bible's day, but it can never substitute for meeting face to face. And finally, gathering together is the example that was given to us by the first, first church. Let's make plans. Let's be in our place. Let's look forward to a great day in the Lord's house on Sunday. Hey, as we go, don't forget your devotion guide. We're preaching through the Gospel of John. Don't forget each day you've got your devotion guide that I trust is being a blessing to you. I've seen some comment, uh, some have commented about it. Others remark, thank you so much for doing that. But let's make sure that we are diligent about our time with God. But let's look forward to seeing each other Sunday. I'll look forward to seeing you Sunday morning. And let's be in life groups. And then let's be in the morning service. Let's rejoice together in God's blessings and God's goodness. Let's be dismissed in a word of prayer. Father, I thank you for this evening. And I thank you for the fact that you give us uh, instruction in your word. Lord, we're grateful for technology. We're grateful for the things that we can use to advance the, your kingdom. But Lord, we also know it's important that we come together. May we do so in a way that we can encourage one another and provoke one another to love and good works. May we do so in such a way that as we see each other face to face, our hearts and minds will be drawn together. Lord, may we, may we show our love for you by being in our place and offering our worship and praise both corporately as we do when we're away from the church individually. We're blessing the service this coming Sunday. And it'll be an important day. And it'll be a big day. In some ways, it'll be a difficult day. But Lord, may we rejoice in your goodness. May we look forward to a great day in your house. May we come together as brothers and sisters in Christ in a way that you'll be pleased. And I ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you.